Football After School to Kerry by Patricia McCarthy and she's still alive today, uh, the poet who wrote it. This is a poem that has in common with obviously a poem from my sister, uh, registers to an extent, the gift, and a couple as well. As you can see, all the poems are thematically linked. Football After School really sees us, uh, the speaker being a mother, really worrying about her son and how he's going to grow up and the world he's going to grow up into. Again, direct links to poem from my sister, who we see Liz Lockhead being an older sister, really worrying about what her younger sister is going to be like as she goes through adolescence and worrying that she, she, she or hoping she doesn't make the same mistakes that she did when she was growing up. And this again uh, is, is, similar to, is, is a similar idea to that. Where it's different is at the rhyme scheme. We see a years rhyming with jeers. We see face rhyming with place. Swagger doesn't rhyme with anything, so that's got to be CBSC. Swagger rhymes with dagger. And then we've got head doesn't rhyme with anything whatsoever, so we give that a D. Likewise, scabs, stab, kick, homework. It's a very, very sloppy half rhyme. Pitch, switch, and again, textbook there. Now, this A, B, A, B, C, D, C rhyme scheme, it's not... It's a, it's a strange one to use, really. Uh, everything seems to fit quite smugly, apart from this D end rhyme here. And that really, again, a bit, it suggests that whilst there is, whilst the mother perhaps has uh, got some structure in place for him, for him growing up, she feels that ultimately she's not, she doesn't control that. What he does after school with his friends is something that she has no control over. And I believe that that's why she's used this rhyme scheme, this A, B, A, B, C, D, C rhyme scheme. The D doesn't rhyme with anything, so it does suggest that imperfect rhyme. Also here, obviously, we see homework and kick rhyming, half rhymes, not the strongest rhymes. The, sp the poet's really done this to try and just emphasise the idea that there's... Um, yeah, to try and emphasise this idea that... Quite simply, there is structure there, but it's not perfect structure. And she's aware that these D end rhymes, if you like, are the ones where he might go off and get himself into trouble or not choose the right path in life. And that's an, an admission of that. Let's go into it and see what and see what we can all see. Okay, so it starts off very overtly with you'll. You'll be one of them in a few years. So we can see from this already, the speaker very much sees her son, or uh, as we know that she's speaking to her, as being separate and different to them. She sees them as being different. Perhaps again, different to her expectations, that idea of them as well. There's no regular rhythm to it. Uh, there's unstressed and stressed syllables all over the place. There's no regular rhythm to it as well, which again suggests less formality left perfection if it was perfect rhyme scheme perfect structure she might be writing about the perfect child to do the perfect upbringing but she's chosen not to do that and i believe that's why as i said it reflects that she's she worries for her son but she says you'll be one of them in a few years war paint slicked over your face this idea of war paint obviously instantly suggests violence perhaps an idea that he might join the army even when he's older she doesn't know but she says you'll be one of them war paint slicked all over your face perhaps war paint could be a metaphor for blood if they've been fighting perhaps it could be a metaphor for even spots just simply having zits all over them that's like the war paint slicked all over his face uh, it does suggest as well that if he's got war paint slicked over his face that he is ready for war as well it's not at the moment, but in the years to come, he will be ready for war, ready for this battle, whether it be on a football pitch, whether it be in a street, whether it be in an actual war, uh, war situation. She talks about your common language jeers, about him swearing, saying things that he wouldn't normally say in front of his mother, he will say around his friends. And she says, dribbling the sun around the place with premature, the premature swagger of manhood, butting it with your head, your school is tie, tie a stiff striped dagger. The sun here is obviously, it's a metaphor for football, and it's an extended metaphor. She uses it again throughout, uh, again in the, in the poem. This idea of the sun, obviously, kind of being, 
the thing which gives him life, the sun gives the world, the, 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 everything on earth, life. Without the sun, everything would be dead. So it's very much a suggestion that her son views the sun as being the centre of his world, the energy that gives him to live, basically. And she says, dribbling the, dribbling the sun around the place. Ar I'm sorry, about the place. And that suggests that there's no fixed direction uh, in his life. There's no fixed direction for the path that he will take. There's no focused direction, certainly, and he's just dribbling it around the place. She then goes into this idea of a premature swagger. Premature swagger of being a man, of thinking that he's grown up, that he knows what he's doing, he's a bit of a tough guy. She worries about that, dribbling it with his premature swagger of manhood, butting it with your head. And she's very unclear as to what's being head-butted here. Is it the... Is it the idea of him becoming a man he's slightly almost rebelling against his head butting that is it simply trying to give the idea that men young men become violent however you want to see it this idea of head butting obviously links in with this idea of war pain as well and then she really goes in here and she says there's a colon here so she's going to give us more information to, to almost tie it all up and she says your school tie a stiff striped dagger and that idea is really a school tie provides unity to a school. If everyone's got the same uniform, theoretically they're therefore all equal. What McCarthy's done here is she's very much juxtaposed this concept, concept of unity with um, with violence. She's she's juxtaposed opposing this idea of unity with no longer being united but being divided if someone's going to stab somebody else obviously that's a division within society and that's what she worries that this symbol of unity that he's got at the moment will actually become more uh, a striped a stiff striped dagger this idea of unity will lead to division it will lead to problems and fracturing in later life it will again the word dagger instantly linking with the idea of uh, of headbutting of war paint as well. So she's really worried about how her son gets older, how he's going to become violent. Again, very affirmative, yes. Soon you'll be, as if she's got no no, no um, other ideas in her head, she says, yes. Soon you'll be picking scabs of kisses off your skin as each kiss makes you dwarf a tree. Sorry, as each kick makes you dwarf a tree. This idea of picking scabs of kisses. Well, scabs are the things that you get if you cut your skin and it heals up and gets hard. That's called a scab. So the idea that he's picking scabs suggests that whilst he may have problems and they may begin to heal, they may begin to heal, he will likely, being a man, destroy that. He will constantly go back and pick the, pick off the scab to reopen the wound and to suggest possibly he'll have the same problems over and over again. She worries that from the one injury, metaphorically the one problem, he won't learn from it and he'll continue to make the same mistake again and again and again. And this idea of kisses, well it suggests that maybe perhaps the young man is so in love with football that he views the bruises and cuts that he gets from it as some kind of affection, perhaps doesn't maybe feel that he gets a lot of affection elsewhere. And those cuts and bruises are actually like kisses to him. They're an essential, uh, important part of, of the game to him and it makes him feel almost wanted, I suppose. Also fits in with the idea of growing up, adolescence and kissing girls and things like that. So you'll be picking scabs of kisses off your skin as each kick makes you dwarf a tree, a metaphor there, makes you dwarf a tree. And this nature, natural imagery is continued later on in this stanza, uh, sorry, later on in the poem. Really quite interesting, uh, the idea that you dwarf a tree, each kick, so almost each kick he's taking, it makes him taller than a tree, it makes him bigger, stronger, more confident, and also fitting under the simple idea of as he's growing up, he's getting taller and bigger. And stab a flower. Again, we've got this idea. We've got kick. We've got stab. More violent imagery being brought into this poem. More concerns about her son and what he's going to turn into as a man. And she talks about the unset homework between the margins of this makeshift pitch, teaching you more than a textbook how to survive any monster switch. We've really got the idea here that he's... Um, how can I put it? 
this idea that um, the unset homework, well, nobody's asked him to do it, okay? This unset homework that he's doing, he's doing out of choice. He's playing football out of choice because he loves it. We've got the idea of margins here. You talk about the margins, the dimensions of a football pitch, but also the margins that you find on the left-hand side of A4 paper where you write the date and things like that. So there's a play on words. The margins of this makeshift pitch, probably likely to be a school playground or something like that, teaching you more than a textbook. Book, how to survive any monster switch. So he's almost admitting here that actually school and all the lessons within it aren't going to really prepare her son for the real world outside of school. Yes, academically it'll get him the grades, get him to university, but actually she's admitting here there's a whole huge world out there and actually being able to play football after school with his mates, possibly getting into fights, teaches him more about life than any textbook or any class or any homework actually will. And she says that uh, how will survive any monster switch. Perhaps a footballing analogy, the idea of switching play, switching the ball, but also the idea of monsters being the people within society that he might encounter when he's older who are going to cause him problems and so on and so forth. So it's really this idea that he will learn more discipline and how to deal with things on the football pitch than he would do in school. Um and that's really the main kind of ideas. Uh, the idea here as well about, um, uh, as I said to you, uh, dwarfing a tree, stabbing a flower. It's quite simply, the young man is rebelling against everything, including nature. And it's almost that idea of nature versus nurture, you know. Uh, Mum's tried as hard as possible to nurture him. Uh, but he's going against it, he's going against nature, he's going against her nurture. He's simply growing up and mum finds it difficult to deal with. As we get into the third and fourth stanzas of the poem, she uses a volta here. She kind of makes a turn on the argument. Yet, as I look at your porcelain skin and their granite jewels, the idea of porcelain being very white, very pure, beautiful, juxtaposed with the grey, hard, granite jewels. She's looking at his adolescent, innocent skin compared to their granite jewels, their hardened jaws, their more mature faces. And she wonders if you'll ever know how to dodge bruises on your shins from studded boots. Again, lit denotation of that, simply will he be able to avoid tackles when playing football with his footwork be nimble enough? But also, there's an idea of how to dodge bruises in your shins from studded boots. Will you be able to deal with life's problems? When something happens in life that's a problem to you, will you be able to dance around it? Will you be able to dodge it? Will you be able to get out of the way of it and resolve it or not? There's real concern here. She's really now getting worried about her son in later life and how he's going to deal with such problems and things like that. She, wor she worries here the idea, well, the idea of bruises obviously it could be physical or metaphorical. I mean, it could be the literal bruises that he gets from playing football, but also the metaphorical bruises, the metaphorical things that initially hurt when it happens, but there's nothing there, and only in later days does the bruise begin to show, and therefore do you actually begin to get a sense of pain and become sore to touch that bruise days after than, the act, than when it actually happened. And that's what she's wondering. Will he be able to dodge these emotional bruises on his shins from studded, studded boots? Be clever enough to tackle fouls with something more than ink-stained fists and feet? Will you be able to sort out your problems in life? The idea of tackle fouls. Will you be able to sort out problems in your life with something other than kicking or punching somebody? Will you be able to use logic, rationale, reason? Will you be able to discuss with them and sort it out? Or are you going to be like so many men and just throw a punch to our face if you don't like what you, what you hear? Ink stained, obviously, because I've got ink all over his hands from school. And she really asks here, perhaps you'll be too vulnerable for living. Perhaps you'll be too vulnerable for living. Perhaps, actually, you're not going to survive this world. It's really, it's not a very optimistic poem. She's qu it's quite pessimistic, almost. There's a t tone of pessimism here. Um, she's pessimistic about it. She's not entirely convinced he is going to be able to. And again, if she was to be saying those things to him, it would probably affect the young man and how he perceives himself and his perception within the world and how he deals with things. She says, perhaps you'll be too vulnerable for a living. Not hooligan enough to trample into the sod your shadow that, grow the shadow that grows twice as fast as yourself. That idea, obviously, of him physically growing, but also growing in confidence and things like that. Perhaps he's not going to be tough enough, not, not, not man enough, to be able to 
um, trample into the sod, trample into the ground, the shadow that grows. Perhaps he's not going to be enough of a man to carry on through these things. Perhaps actually she's almost admitting here, maybe men do need to be able to throw a punch and defend themselves now and again. And she worries possibly he's not going to be able to. She says to sample punches below the belt from on you know without flinching. To be able to, perhaps somebody that he does know, will you be able to take these emotional or possibly even physical blows from somebody that you do know? Will you be able to do that and deal with it and roll on or is that going to destroy it and break you? And that really worries her. And that idea without flinching, it's almost like she'd be embarrassed if her son was to move away from a punch. There's almost an implication here she would want him to stand up to a bully toe to toe and have a fight. Which juxtaposes with her earlier ideas and certainly the, 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 the earlier kind of first line in this stanza, not a hooligan enough she worries about. She admits here, through her own admission, I can't prevent crossbones on your knees turn bullies into cement. Crossbones on his knees could be scabs from football, it could be um, memories of previous violent things, and she worries that, you know, perhaps she won't be able to uh, have perhaps other people see these scars or scabs on his skin and want to fight him and see him tough. She worries, she knows, she admits here, she cannot prevent these crossbones on his knees, these scars and wounds on his knees from turning bullies into cement. If you turn someone into cement, you make them absolutely mm. hard, you make them stiff. So her suggestion there that by turning bullies into cement, he's beating them, but she's perhaps wondering, well, will he actually be able to beat them? We then get, she continues it, we can see through these last three stanzas, she's the dash at the end of the line before going on to a new stanza. And she says, or confiscate the sun, the sun they'll puncture and put out. She's admitting she won't be able to take away the football that they'll puncture and put out. She won't be able to help him when he's older. She won't be able to come and save him anymore. And this is what this whole poem's been building towards. She, he's got to be able to stand on his own two feet as a man and sort out his own problems. And again, mum's just worried, will he be able to do that? She worries that they'll confiscate the son, that they'll steal his football, that they'll take his life away, they'll puncture it and put out, they'll extinguish, extinguish his life, possibly even kill him. She's admitting here, possibly he might even die. She doesn't know, she's unable to do anything. But there's a real understanding and a real admission from herself that she is unable to do anything about it. And it's growing up in his formative years, she's nurtured him, she's looked after him, she's tried to prepare him. Perhaps here actually she's actually admitting she's not done enough as a mum. Perhaps she's worrying, I've not done enough enough of a, of a, of a, as a mum to really, to really uh, prepare him for the scary outside world. There's no mention of another male figure in the relationship or in the family unit. So perhaps it's a single mum who's done the best she can for her son. But ultimately it's a son she's got and he will go off and make his own decisions. Being a woman himself, she's perhaps unable to really relate to and understand what it's like for a young boy, a young man growing into, a young boy growing into a man. And that's really what she worries about. She says, in their robust world, I'm no Amazon. In their tough, robust world, I'm no warrior princess. We think about Titania in A Midsummer Night's Dream being stolen from, from the Amazon. She's no Amazon princess as women. Uh, sorry, Hippolyta in A Midsummer Night's Dream, not Titania, sorry. Hippolyta is an Amazonian princess warrior that was stolen in battle. And this idea here, she's admitting she's no warrior. She can't sort out your problems, wee man. You've got to deal with it yourself. She says here, I can only scream inside. I can only scream inside without a shout for you not to inherit my fragility. She cannot say it out loud. She's unable to, perhaps because she's so anxious and such a scared kind of person herself. She's unable to say it. She's got to scream inside. She cannot actually let it know. Perhaps she's really admitting here she understands. She cannot truly let her son know all the worries and concerns she has about him. She doesn't want to. She almost wants him to make these own mistakes for himself. She almost wants him to uh, experience life for himself. A bit like Paul from my sister, we see Liz Lockhead trying to protect her sister but knowing she's going to wear her shoes anyway. Mum wants to protect the son but she knows he's going to go out and possibly make these mistakes anyway. It's really her concern is how is her son going to deal with these mistakes and is, she, is he going to learn from them and which path is he going to take. And she says here, this really makes the whole poem make sense. It all makes sense why we've had this woman in such pessimistic tone throughout it all. Really, this final bit really makes sense to us. I can only scream inside without a shout for you not to inherit my fragility. She, there's an admission here. She is fragile. She is fragile. Her life 
experience. Her mistakes have made her fragile, vulnerable and scared, a bit like she worried her son is going to be. She says, Cole on here to tell us a little bit more. She tells us the fragility is never to love too much or to be aged as I was by youth's anxiety. She's warning him, don't fall in love too much. Obviously, there's an implication that love has hurt her in previous years and previous relationships. But she begs him, you know, never to love too much or to be aged as I was. And here's the real turn, as I was by youth's anxiety. She was anxious as a youth. When she was her son's age, she was worried about these pressures of growing up and perhaps she's regretting that she didn't actually take more risks. And we can see that idea really coming through the poem. She does kind of, while she doesn't want her son to take these risks and make these mistakes, she is prepared for it to happen. She understands it has to happen. It's a part of growing up. And this juxtaposes with her when she was a wee girl. When she was younger, she didn't take these risks. She was paralysed by youth's anxiety. She was scared to take these risks. And therefore, because she's not taken them, she's not made these mistakes. Therefore, she doesn't know what these mistakes are going to be like. And she feels useless when it comes to trying to help and trying to uh, help her son and, de and develop her son and prepare him for the adult world. The tone is obviously that of, protect of protection, of protectiveness. Uh, anxiety as well. It's a very anxious poem. There's a real poem of anxiety, a uh, tone of anxiety, and ultimately she just wants her son to be able to do the best he can, and she's worried that he he might make these mistakes uh, in the future that she's got nothing to do, and, and there's nothing that she can do about. As always, confiscate the son, they'll puncture and poo out. It kind of ties in with the idea in the previous dances about dribbling around. The writer uses enjambment, no punctuation at the end of these lines to try and really create that image of him dribbling about or having no direction or anything like that. We see it back in, um, I think it was stanza, let me think here, two seconds. Uh, we see it, yeah, we see it in one of the previous stanzas, this idea of dribbling the sun. Um, in stanza one, dribbling the sun about the place with the premature swagger of manhood butting it with your head. All in enjambment, just trying to recreate the idea of the boy, young man, I uh, literally dribbling the football around the around the pitch with no direction, but metaphorically dribbling his life, having no direction within that, and that's why they've used, she's used enjambment. Go to the poem, look at the Cezura used, think what that might be trying to emphasise. Could Cezura emphasise or give the impression of a tackle, of a scab, of a scar? Go back through the poem and work all that out for yourself. And as always, remember to develop the analysis. Don't just take my analysis, take my ideas, annotate your own copies of your poems and really develop the analysis onto different levels. Remember in your essays, you really want to be taking a quote, analysing denotation, connotation of that quote, especially if it's a poetic technique, then going into two or three individual word choices within that quote to help you develop your analysis and that is how you will help to get your A's and B's. Best of luck with the upcoming exams.